Hey, Dr. Shepard, Dave here, um, pulling up your clips. Um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this picture here, looking at real time, looking at slow motion. This is the one where the left tibia uh, and that knee looks to be externally rotated. And your right knee looks like it's hugging the post a little closer. And I'm just putting it in slow motion right now. Just looking at your range of motion, looking at any differences. Um, big thing, I'm looking at your body position and alignment, so I'm going to put the bullseye on you. And look how you're completely centered. Your nose is directly over the center of the bike. And it pretty much stays there. You get a little drift, but nothing too significant. All right. I'll take the bullseye away. Put the postural grid. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to line it up on your shin and just see if, you know, sort of show the uh, how the ankle and the knee line up over top of each other. And you can see the knee's a little bit externally rotated there when we line up with your foot. I'm going to pull up the other clip now. And the first thing, a couple things I noticed here. First, I'm going to take a look at that, that knee, that left knee. Um, it looks to, to me to be straighter. So I'm going to throw the, uh, the grid on there, and it appears to be lining up more in line. But what I'm noticing is the, le the right hip appears to be further away from the post of the bike than on the other clip. So it looks like your right hip is now shifting out a little bit, but most importantly, look at your body alignment. See, there's the center of the bike. Look how your entire body shifted to the right, and it stays that way pretty much through your whole cycle phase. So. That's pretty significant. I'm going to throw an arrow on there. And I'll just put an arrow, look at the body position. And then you can look down at that knee. That knee appears to be flaring out more on that right side. So the left knee looks like it's in better alignment, but the right side appears to be compensating. Let's go ahead and get a side profile. The one I really looked at here, it was really your shin angle that I was looking at. Um, definitely you get more ankle range of motion in one of these compared to the other. And I'll put them side by side for you so you can kind of look. But uh, I was throwing an angle on here, kind of messing around with the angle. But again, I don't think the angle is going to be that accurate. Um, it's hard to see the, the, the dot on the ankle, so you're not going to get the exact. So what I'm going to do is I want to put them in split screen on the side profile. This, I think, is a, is a good visual. You'll see the differences between the two shin angles. But you get more ankle dorsiflexion in one of these clips compared to the other. So the question is, you're, you know, why? Um, and is that good? Is it bad? This is not my area. This is just simply observations. Um, but what I'm seeing is that you definitely get steeper angles in, in certain positions in here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze them. You look at the picture on the left, appear to have a, a steeper, ang uh, more ankle dorsiflexion. And the, the shin angle appears to be more horizontal. Uh, it appears to be steeper than uh, the one on the right. So the question is why is that going on? I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to put a little arrow pointing to the shin angle on both sides um, so you have that to look at. But anyway, that's just kind of my observations. Um, and then we can go back and, and look at which is which is orthotic, which is without. But again, I, you know, clearly there it does create changes. The question is, are they good or are they bad? I don't know. Um, you know, I, what I'm seeing is a redirection of stress through the body when you start moving things around. So you just have to make sure we address the root cause. Um, thanks.